Hello everybody, welcome to another daily dose of gaming news and all that good stuff and as always I also publish on Rumble, Dogger site and on Patreon for extra support and any kind of uh, updates and as such I will uh, use uh, Twitter X platform for that uh, usually mainly for live streams when I'm uh, live basically <laughs> Uh, so yesterday I did uh, uh, I commit a mistake there uh, from the uh, previous uh, gaming news program. Uh, I don't know what happened. Uh, basically, the voice my voice was with echo. Uh, I had to basically redo to a certain point. Uh, the best to my knowledge, what I've talked about again, the the, the overall impressions are the same. I managed to do a shorter video. Uh, but yeah, I, I had to do basically a re-upload of that video. Uh, but now it's everything seems to be in order. Um, I think I, I opened some software open that was affecting the microphone. That's why it was echoey. If you listen to that episode, I, I apologize for that. Um, but yeah, overall, I, I, from my perspective, I think the, the, the microphone upgrade did improve a little bit. Uh, the voice seems less um echoey it doesn't capture uh, because my room is very empty in the sense that i don't have anything to uh, to cover the, the walls and the such way i have naked walls i've got uh, a, a mirror uh, 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 be, uh not uh, not below uh behind me uh and i think it, the, the voice bounces a little bit it, it drives a little bit f flat and i think the voice has some kind of reverb before i think now it's a little bit better um, I, I really do appreciate some uh, feedback on that if you can uh, regarding um, the, 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 the voice quality uh, regarding older videos uh, and also on the gameplay side of things I use a different software but I think the, 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 the voice is reflective of the same kind of characteristics and yesterday I did manage to, to go about and do a channel update again um, it just to um, uh, reinforce things that I've been talking about in the in the gaming news programs that I've been doing every day um, it's more about focus on the, the upcoming game places that I'm going to introduce which is Midnight Suns hopefully next week it, it will be uh, starting to go live and uh, start uh, talked about a little bit on the on the on the thing here regarding the live stream program which is basically when i can i will eventually go about and do the the elden ring gameplay vod i will try to get around see if i can do today and tomorrow starting a new gameplay series uh sorry new gameplay series a new game plus on elden ring um because i really want to uh, dive there um yeah uh, mainly because of lore stuff and implications uh, see if i can start catching new new stuff uh, and some hints from the dlc that we played um but yeah um i think that's it um yeah and, and i i, I uh, also did uh, call to attention that uh, if you have any kind of doubts on the on the on the setup that i have i have my pc part picker basically it, it has everything there um i think uh, yeah i need to update that to include the microphone and my gamepad but uh, i have to do this basically uh i have to do like a custom entry list there and hopefully that will be accepted on the list there um mainly the, the that uh, pc part little uh, pc part picker list is money if you have any doubts or any questions regarding my setup here um uh, uh, just comment on any video that you are watching and, and feel free to do so and i will try to uh, to get back to you as soon as i can uh, but yeah other than that i don't see anything else that needs any kind of more highlighting here from the channel so yeah let's go to the news uh, uh seemingly nfd is doing uh, some shenanigans let's say regarding um mobile gpus um again uh, for my mobile GPUs, I'm not that much in touch with that because the NVIDIA since uh, a few series now is been doing uh, different things here, especially on the low end. Uh, again, I really do not recommend uh, if, if you're going to buy a gaming laptop, um, again, to a certain degree, it, it reaches to an extent that uh, in terms of price, might as well build a DOI um, PC. Um, especially when laptops usually reach uh, 1500 dollars might as well spend an extra 200 bucks or something like that and build a proper 
uh, a proper PC, uh, mainly because on long term uh, you can upgrade single pieces of hardware instead of just buying a new laptop, basically. Uh, it gets uh, a little bit cheaper than to just buy every two years or so to keep up with the same kind of uh, performance, try to spend that much money between two years, um, then to just change up the, or add up things that you need to, to, to go about your, your DIY PC. Uh, and they launched this new supposedly RTX 3050, um, again, the name is a little bit misleading, um, mainly given that the fact that it's only have four gigabytes of VRAM and it's, the memory bandwidth is limited to 64 bit, uh, only has uh, 1792 CUDA cores. Again, this is supposedly uh, come with a chip uh, with a chipset that it's belonging to the 4000 series, but it, because it is so way down. On the, on the scale in terms of performance, uh, I will assume this is like the, the the bad batch that can only take advantage of getting around having uh, this kind of uh, performance here. And I think they are just putting there on the low uh, end of the spectrum in terms of the laptops. Uh, it's not the first time that they do. Again, uh, uh, they will not throw chips to, to the garbage just because they don't find a way of trying to sell them. Uh, but yeah, I don't think that is not something is going to be bad about these chips per se. Uh, but uh, yeah, the, take a, you, you need to take some precaution when you uh, see something like this, uh, especially on the lower end. Uh, you might be misled to think that it's like a, a proper chip from the PC desktop uh, trying to be put out on a laptop uh, com uh, device. The, and uh, it's not. Usually it's not. It's a very well downgraded chip even uh, if you go through the naming scheme. And uh, I usually advise if you really want to go for a gaming laptop, might as well, uh, I don't know, try to, to get around to see a better uh, option uh, because four gigabytes of VRAM, uh, usually it's not that well performed, even playing 1080p low setting games, four gigabytes is starting to, uh, it runs out basically uh, when you uh, go about the, the starting screen. Uh, even six gigabytes is very low. Um, again, uh, there's been some uh, testing, especially from Hardware Unbox. Uh, they, they, uh, sorry, Daniel Owen um, also is very specific on GPUs, even is throughout his testing. Uh, basically, 8 gigabytes is the bare minimum 1080p gaming in a, in a, in a proper sense of, of playing that game, um, especially uh, the, the more recent games. Uh, the, Again, uh, more uh, VRAM is going to be needed. But yeah, other than that, again, don't get fooled too much or uh, get yourself too much on the weeds regarding low-end GPUs for mobile uh, uh, GPU stuff there. Uh, basically, that's my overall perception of this. Um, continuing with Intel. Yeah, Intel is cooked. Intel is cooked. I watched yesterday. Uh, I will probably uh, leave a link on the video from uh, Moore's Law is Dead. He, he basically uh, uh, did a video regarding this situation here. He, again, he is one of the most uh, assertive people. He seems to, to know a lot about the technology. He's got some insider contacts there, uh, even with leaks and rumors of upcoming products. Uh, he tends to be pretty much on the point there and uh, this kind of uh, information like insider information um, it's always good to check in this kind of situations also not to try only to bring scoop of upcoming products but try to get a pulse of what's happening inside the company and even his own um, insider uh, let's say insider informations uh, inf informants uh, they don't really kind of know uh, to a certain degree uh, what's happening there they, they have some uh, speculation uh, what might happen and it goes about even with the, the, the fabs uh, especially Arizona that might have triggered uh, a lot of these issues especially regarding oxidation in certain uh, CPUs I think especially the 13 chan CPUs uh, but yeah uh, the, there is a verge uh, site here they try to get around and getting some um, uh, information from Intel uh, but the main gist is Intel says it won't issue a recall for the this affected CPUs let's say facing instability issues no halt in sales and they supposedly are confident that microcode patch addresses the issue but validation continues again they 
have uh, going uh, in the leap of faith that this microcode patch on 15th of August will solve everything. That's basically their their, their uh, praying that will work, and if it it will not, because if there is CPU de degradation and there is CPU de uh, CPU degradation, uh, can be the fact that the the, the silicon is de degrading because of the high voltage stuff, and the fact that there in some CPUs is going to be oxidation. Oxidation works to a certain extent like rust in metal. Uh, you can try to prevent a little bit the rest by painting a coat of something but if you don't uh, go to the root of the problem which in this case on chips you just need basically to 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 replace the chip there is no way of replacing something or try to clean the the, the oxidation uh, because the the fact that it's so small in the in the way that oxidation works there you just need to replace the chip um, and usually oxidation comes about about def uh, manufacturing defects um, and it was not properly validated or there was no proper QA and testing uh, regarding the, the, this uh, CPU oxidation issue. Uh, but yeah, crashes, instability, performance issues pre pre presented, uh, especially um, on the 14, 13 gen uh, CPUs. And basically it's on the higher uh, tier of CPUs uh, because they, again, they need more wattage, so more power to be driven through the silicon there. Uh, and uh, at this moment in time, it, uh, the, 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 are, these are the ones that are reflecting uh, the most uh, at this moment in time that are reflecting the, the issues that we demonstrated, even though there is clues that probably it will take probably a little bit more time, but other SKUs will have the same issues uh, throughout time. It will take a little bit more time because, again, CPU degradation, how it works is uh, the, the voltage there. Uh, it's the the more voltage that you have uh, through a, a timeline uh when it reaches that point it will start to fail and uh i will assume that uh, even from this generation like lower um, powered cpus uh will will manifest these issues also uh some of the responses are really really bad uh, basically the question is uh, will intel issue recall and they basically said no and as Intel altered sales or perform any channel inventory recalls while it validates the update and it's no. So <laughs> it doesn't inspire any kind of confidence. Um, the fact that the, the, this is so grave that uh, a lot of customers uh, and uh, in this case, corporate customers are just just scrapping and, and changing to uh, to the competition there doesn't uh, inspire any kind of confidence and the fact that they're not even doing any recall on these big clients that they have or bigger clients that they have and they, they are not behind the scenes trying to solve the issue by the fact to performing a channel inventory recalls which is uh, all the inventory that the stores have on their um, inventory uh, on the backlog to call them out, testing out and see if the, there is any issue or not with those CPUs, probably demonstrates that the, the issue is not resolvable just by testing. Uh, or or uh, I think that the issue is, is might be depending on uh, on the microcode stuff by lowering voltage, it will lower the performance. And uh, I think it will not resolve per se, but uh, delay the issue to come about, uh, mainly because of the architecture of the chips themselves. Uh, I don't know if it makes sense in that way. Uh, they, all, they will not extend the warranty of these parts here, and they don't even, uh, basically, they, they will not even going to do RMAs because they are not issuing recalls, they are not doing anything in that sense. So, um, yeah. Given how difficult the issue was for Intel to pin down what proof of customers uh, need to sh uh, to share to obtain an RMA, how lenient will Intel be? They don't even answer this one. Uh, they don't even answer the, the, the warranty stuff. Uh, this is not going good. They are getting cooked out of uh, business if they continue like this. Um, and got some comments here. The company is showing pity. Did disclose which products were affected and uh, here is what uh, they have to say. Intel uh, 13 and 14 gen generation desktop processors with 65 watts or higher base power, including all these variants and 65 non-K variants, could be affected by elevated voltage issue. However, this does not mean that all processors listed are or will be impacted by elevated voltage issues. Again, 
doesn't say anything. So basically, I think I, I'm not sure about uh, wattage power here uh, as a base power uh, thing here. I don't know which CPUs are affected here. I will assume most of them uh, because, yeah, I think most of them are, are affected by this. I think only like the 100, like 13, 100 series or 200 series or something like that might not be affected. They usually are more lower powered. Uh, but basically, all the lineup is is going to be affected by this, and they just don't give a shit about it. They will continue to sell it, and they will try to sleaze their way out of doing any kind of refunds or RMAs or something like that, that's for sure. Uh, Intel also revealed that uh, they are confident that the upcoming micro code patch will be effective solution potentially putting the problem to an end. However, again, the firm is still assessing the situation, so they think this is going to solve, but they are still assessing the situation. This is a very contradictory message. Uh, includes its scope of influence along uh, with how grave the problem is or whatever single uh, simple microcode will fix it. So in short terms right now, Team Blue is completely clueless and it's hanging to a rope, hoping that the microcode will fix the problem or else all will stumble. Again, this is a huge leap of faith, uh, trying to get around just hanging on, um, on on this microcode patch. Uh, it will not solve the problem. It will delay only the problem by, a, I will assume, a couple of months until they launch the, the new 15 gen parts. But uh, if they fuck up their, their um, consumer confidence on their own already established parts, I don't know how they think they're going to sell uh, the 15th gen to compensate the, the loss they are taking on the business there. But yeah, the, and you can, as you can see, uh, this is basically the timeline of Intel CPU stability issue. I'm not going through, through, uh, going, uh, through all of this. It, it's a long story since December 2022, uh, the out of video memory issues, uh, especially your i9 I CPUs there. Um, yeah, it's a few months after the release of the Intel's 14th gen. Yeah, this is not good since 2002 the, again that's why everybody assumes this is like a um, um, uh, a manufacturing and um, um, architecture problem there uh, but yeah uh, again um, they will neither do they will comply with RMA requests and find independent media outlets approaching the firm Intel is trying to sideline them by every means possible. A business model cannot sustain itself without caring for its customers. And with Intel statements denying a large case recall, um, yeah, it looks like the company is prioritizing business here, which isn't sustainable at all. Again, uh, like I've been saying, uh, if you're trying to fuck around with customers, uh, for your already existing products, uh, when you launch the next product, you will find out that people will not buy them because they don't have any trust that you will uh, launch a, a decent product because you didn't even try to resolve the problems that you had with previous products. Um, I think uh, this is not good. I don't wish that Intel goes back or up or something like that, but uh, I, I really do want competition because I, I think if you only have basically uh, AMD taking care of the business here. This is a bad sign because then AMD is going to fall through the 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 the, the, the cracks and 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 becoming the next Intel e eventually. Because uh, when you, you're not going to, if you don't have the pressure of having competition, you will um, uh, you, you companies tend to. Uh, start getting uh, to do more shenanigans that they should be doing. Um, yeah, uh, I really hope that Intel just... Uh, I, I, I also hope that this microcode stuff will fix a lot of issues to the extent that they can uh, turn around and correct all the, the architect issues that they have with these CPUs and, and, and fix them for the next generation of CPUs. Uh, I really don't want them to go down because uh, Intel also has their GPU division um, and I, I hope they really, really go about and fix this issue uh, on their own fabs because there is on the Lure, uh, Moore Lord's Dead uh, channel, that video is specific, they call about the Arizona fab uh, uh, factory there. Similarly, I think they had a problem with... Uh, with the, the 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 oxidation issue there i think and i think even like the i don't know like a higher up had to decide which uh wafers to uh approve or disapprove 
uh, depending on how it looked in terms of the of the process there uh, again it, there is a lot of stuff that need to be explained uh, but I will leave a link on that Moore's Law that it's a 20 minute video I think uh, going throughout the, 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 the issues that they're being countering and also some inside uh, opinions uh, on the company there what the kind of steps they did to try to go about this issue but yeah this does again uh, as I started Intel uh, is cooked if this continues like this um, in terms of games, uh, we got no rest for the wicked update. Uh, they got a lot of stuff here. Uh, revamps Crucible. I think this is a game mode. Uh, improves combat. It adds new content. Again, I um, this seems to be a, a good game in development. Again, they are on early access. They are basically beta testing uh, the player base and taking feedback from that. And I think they are doing a good job from the all the comments that I've been seeing. They are, they are improving and taking account that feedback and, and implementing that on the updates that have been launching, which is always a good uh, positive sign here. Basically, they have a new new Crucible. It's uh, kind of a new roguelike and new boon system. Uh, they have new fungal enemy faction, new item categories, uh, more visceral combat, stray animals. Um, I don't know, pet some stray animals or interact with them. Uh, more to explore. Uh, Previous areas and bridges like the Black Trench and the Nameless Pass have received revisions providing setting new paths and extending these areas providing more for players to seek out and explore in this update. Okay, And it's got the uh, Steam Deck verified and quality of life improvements. Again, this is good. Uh, seems to be on the good path. Um, again, this is early access games, not the, the version 1.0. Um, so take it with a grain of salt. Uh, again, from the few early access games, that eventually I could recommend people to take a shot. This might be one of the few examples here, even though I, as a general, um, as a general philosophy, I don't recommend people trying to take a shot on early access because they are not mandated when you do the, the, the purchase for them to launch a, a full version of the game. And even if they do, uh, doesn't mean that it's going to be better than the, the early access version. Um, but yeah, uh, they seem to be on a good way of uh, launching a pretty decent and interesting game here. Uh, we got here Lost uh, Soul Aside. Uh, this is from the China Joy partnership that PlayStation had with a lot of uh, Chinese developers. Uh, there was uh, already one trailer launch uh, trying to showcase some combat and such here. Uh, interesting uh, here, the, my only thing, uh, worry we, regarding this uh, China Joy uh, project that they have is the fact that it's basically PlayStation putting out the money for development and uh, I will assume they have the, uh, the publishing rights. And again, we come to that PSN requirement stuff on the PC platform because this game will also be launched on, on PC. Um, yeah, I, I don't like the fact that uh, we might get that PSN requirement thing and basically block eight, 180 regions from uh, players from the PC platform to not be able to play that game. And uh, we got also Deathbound demo. Uh, it's now available for PC and PS5, which is good. Uh, again, this game is um, is going to launch very, very uh, uh, in about I don't know. Uh, 10 days or so seems interesting mainly the 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 way some the the combat stuff works i think you you have uh, i don't know you summon uh, different uh, builds if not mistaken or classes of, of players it seems a little bit interesting i got this on my wish list um, mainly to try and keep up with this game this seems a little bit interesting uh, the combat seems okayish uh, but yeah, they already now have a demo here for you to download and try out. I think it's the best way to check how the game feels. And usually I will assume everybody that puts a, game, uh, a demo on their page, they have confidence on their product. So yeah, um, I don't know too much about this. It's like a unique Euro party system. Again, I think you have uh, within yourself the four classes or, or four builds from what I understand that you can change on the fly while combating, uh, depending on, on the enemy type and the such. Uh, again, it's kind of a Souls-like from what I understand, so not, uh, but I, I will wait for the reviews regarding this game. Seems interesting enough. Um, but yeah, coming August 8th 
of this year so uh, we don't need to wait too much and until then you can try out the, the demo here um, we got also uh, some uh, Ubisoft continuation uh, yeah it's not good uh, they are also cooked for this year um, again this video I watched the video I think I mentioned that I watched this video uh, it's a shit show of a, of a show there uh, supposedly the, the, the gameplay is in 4k uh, but it seemed that it was recorded in 1080p uh, graphic fidelity doesn't seem to be in line with 1080p uh, with the 4k sorry or if it is it's it's a shit show of of a uh, of how it's being presented even but even like smaller things like the explosions they seem from ps2 era um the combat mechanics at, at first i thought they were kind of interesting they are just basically they are the same kind of mechanics not with even with kind of any kind of refinement on since like for example fallout 3 you got some uh stealth sides of those base attack missions that uh, yeah you just explode something on the on the camp there and uh, nobody notices uh, there are some falling and explosions areas of impact stuff that happen that affects npcs and you are closer to that point of impact or explosion and you don't get affected there is not a lot of consistency there on, on the gameplay level uh, what physics seems to be broken there a lot of empty world they cut a lot between the the, the action pieces there um, it seems that there is a lot of empty uh, stuff there that doesn't have anything that you can do around. Um, not even like enemies or like uh, random events or something like that. Doesn't seem to be happening. Nothing there. Uh, again, the this video is basically like a side uh, side fetch quest. Uh, something that could have taken a little bit of uh, imagination to I don't know come up with something. Uh, the Sarlacc pit, which is something that could be explored a little bit better, is just you going through a tunnel and find what you need to find and then go about um yeah nothing really interesting there her face jesus the facial animations are completely fucked up um not even from uh, i don't know uh, madam solo uh, the, the the other um uh the, even the other characters they don't seem very well animated uh, when you see them um yeah it, it's so bad that uh, you got it's already got reshoot for i don't know uh four times over basically uh and the comments are uh yeah uh this one uh, ign single-handedly saving us all money how to save uh, 80 euros in 10 minutes again all a, a lot of stuff here I, i'm not going to go for all the for all the comments but yeah uh again they tried to attempt to address the negative feedback we noticed this video isn't airy at optimal quality by default please make sure to adjust your video sense to ensure the video has a proper fidelity again they didn't solve the, the, the this uh, warning didn't solve the issue again it, it has poor quality even for 4k i watch all the videos in youtube in 4k and uh, yeah the the quality is uh, I, I think that somebody screwed up recording that thing for sure because it doesn't seem 4k that's for sure uh even at 4k from youtube even taking account compression from videos from youtube doesn't look 4k uh, but yeah uh then we got the, this recent uh earns calling where uh, if guillemot tried to gaslight uh, the investors uh saying that there is a lot of interest and positive feedback on the upcoming two main uh, games which is star wars outlaws and assassin's Creed shadows um and basically one investor from bank and america question uh, Ubisoft's narrative that the game was receiving positive feedback and even question if Ubisoft will delay the game following the negative feedback and basically uh, this guy just said the game the game has gone gold so the date is well confirmed for August 14 and as you mentioned we'll be showcasing more content of a very high quality multiple hours that will really show the depths of the open world that is a key element of the promise to enjoy the exploration of the galaxy and with multiple planets so that uh, will bode well for the game in terms of high quality delivery again uh, not a, uh, talking a lot of shit saying nothing uh, even the, the CFO uh, threw his own tidbit there uh, but the, 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 the truth is in the pudding and um, at least since around um, the announcement of the game and the trailers come up and all the Assassin's Creed Shadows, they, the, the, the stock has been dropping and it's been dropping kind of a, in a very consistent way um, for around uh, a year. 
the stock has declined in a year around 80%, and in the past five years dropped 75%, which is completely insane. Um, that uh, it's it's been steadily uh, coming down. Again, um, degradation of quality of your product uh, will lead to uh, your evaluation as a company to be degraded as well. Um, again, uh, I will. Mm, I, I'm foreseeing that this game is not going to be good. It will sell because it's a Star Wars game. A lot of people uh, like myself and you um, usually pay attention to to a certain degree of this what's happening. Uh, in the gaming industry and uh, in the, the the trailers and the, the gameplay stuff, there uh, they can they can have a sense here. But uh, I think the normal consumer uh, or will see like a father will see something from Star Wars. He thinks it's going to be good for the kid to play or something like that. Or they don't uh, don't even pay too much attention to reviews when they come out, and they will buy the game because it's a Star Wars game or something like that. Um, again, it will sell, but I don't think it's going to be the breakout um, game that they think it's going to be, uh, because you can only gaslight to a certain degree, and people that are paying attention um, are don't like very much the game how it is as game uh, gameplay mechanics, uh, even to a certain degree graphic fidelity, which for me is kind of a secondary. As long as the gameplay and the story and the, and the narrative that you want to to, to go through the game, if it is good, I'm uh, more willing to accept less graphic fidelity, um, depending on the, the art direction of the game. But yeah, uh, this game, uh, I think, is going to bomb to a certain degree. And the reviews are not, uh, I think, it's going to be, I don't know, uh, IGN and, and, and that uh, group of activists, I think they will give it eight and a half maximum, e even with all the, 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 the gaslighting that they're throwing at us, I don't think it's going to, to surpass eight, eight and a half, uh, because from what I've been seeing from the game, uh, I don't think they can hide too much behind a, a good score. Uh, and it's going to have a huge discrepancy from this kind of establishment reviewers and from independent reviewers. Um, but yeah, uh, keep your eyes. Uh, if you're interested in this game by any chance, uh, I will uh, advise you to keep your eyes on um, on the review part of things, not only from IGN, GameSpot, and all those outlets, uh, but also from independent reviews that you usually trust, uh, and they have this kind of same uh, same taste in you regarding games. Uh, I, I will keep my eyes on them more than ever uh, because this game is going to be gaslighted because you got Madam Solo uh, and all the Star Wars shenanigans uh, from Lucas Films that have been happening from the series and the movies uh, again. There is a lot of things on the background trying to uh, make an effort for to gaslight people uh, around their own IP. But yeah, other than that, uh, let's go for some gaming deals. Uh, at this moment in time, Epic Games Store uh, on their free game stuff. Got this one, Fist of the uh, Forge in Shadow Torch. This seems to be a pretty decent game. Uh, it's kind of a Metroidvania, kind of like 2D Metroidvania style game there. Uh, I heard good stuff about this, even though it's like an indie game, that there isn't, there wasn't a lot of um, uh, publicity around this game when it came out. Uh, but yeah, even uh, from Game Informer, PlayStation Universe got some, uh, yeah, not even like a lot of um, huge platforms uh, reviewed this game. Um, but I think it's a pretty decent one and it's for free, uh, might as well uh, accept it like a, a demo or something like that. Um, I only use this uh, Epic Games uh, store just for the free games, I don't buy anything there. Uh, again, uh, as I've been mentioning, the, pl the platform itself doesn't offer me uh, a, a fraction of what Steam offers me as a distributive platform. Um, that's why I only take advantage of this as for free games. Uh, on Steam, we got the Neo franchise. So we got the first game, which is a complete edition with everything, 77% off, and Neo 2 complete edition also 40% off. Again, this kind of souls like kind of a thing here. Um, both of them have uh, uh, at least positive reviews. So it's always uh, something. And I think the second one improves a lot from the first one. Um, yeah, it's one of those if you're like, uh, I don't know, uh, kill the hunger for uh, Souls-like games. I think this is a, a good option here. 
Uh, we got also Resident Evil franchise is still on sale. I will leave all the Resident Evil games on the on the description below so you can have a go and uh, complete the collection. Uh, we got also Remnant 2. Again, I don't play this game, but it's a, a kind of a positive game. A lot of it's very well known franchise. I think they launched uh, new content recently, today or yesterday or something like that. And uh, it's one of those that a lot of people play. So um, just to call you to attention, that is 50% off the base game. Um, and we got also other other bundles there. Uh, yeah, it's not a game for me. Uh, it's a multiplayer game. So. Uh, but yeah, because it's a very well-known game and it's on deal, so I will might as well call to the attention of that. Uh, we got Midnight Suns, again, still 75% uh, off till the 1st of August. And finally, we got No Man's Sky. It's still uh, for sale for around two days or so. So yeah, this is a huge deal. The World's Part 1 update that they did uh, revamps basically overall the game itself and adds more stuff as usual. Uh, pretty good uh, uh, alternative, or I think uh, Starfield might be a poor alternative to No Man's Sky to a certain degree than the other way around. Uh, but yeah, this is what I got for you today. Then um, I will wrap up with a plug on my Patreon as usual. Um, yeah, the Patreon for extra support, and at this moment in time, are more focused on getting um, a storage solution for me to be able to have backups of backups of stuff that I do for my clients. And of course, some extra space for the videos that I do for the channel. And as always, any kind of feedback is very much appreciated. And I hope to see you in the next one. Hope you have a wonderful day. And with all that said, Namimasarao.